Good morning again to all students. I hope you all are doing amazing. I have a question for you today. Have you seen a wall? What a wall is made up of? Yes, you are right. It is completely and basically made up of many bricks joined together. Like this, we have amazing thing by which a body is made up of. So let's start today also with an amazing topic. This topic is the most basic thing of life. Life cannot exist without it. Can you guess what it is? Yeah, you're right. It's a cell. Cells are like those bricks which form a wall, but the difference is cells are living things which make an animal or a plant body, and bricks are non-living things. Now as I said, cells are living things. Then what does this exactly mean? This means that cell can eat like us, digest like us, respire like us, excrete like us, reproduce like us. That means it can grow like us in numbers and size and it can also show locomotion as you can see in amoeba. Amoeba is single cell organism and it can move. So cell can also move and cell can die also. Let's go in history. Not exactly the history subject, but Let's see the history of the cell. The cell was first discovered and named by Robert Hooke in the year 1665. He observed dead cell of plants in the trunk of a tree. He observed this in a microscope. Do you know microscope? Yes, it's an instrument by which we can magnify the microscopic organisms. A study of cell is known as cytology. Cytology, C-Y-T-O-L-O-G-Y, where cyto means cell and logy means study. So today we'll be doing cytology, that is the study of cell. Now let's turn our faces to the main topic, that is cell. Today we'll be discussing two points. First, what is cell? Second, what many cells make together? So first one, what is cell? If we go as per the standard definition, cell is the structural and functional unit of life. Understood? I know you did not. Let's understand this definition properly. Cell is known as a structural unit of life. This means that it gives structure to life. And as you know, only living things have life, so we can say that Cells give structure to living things starting from microscopic, tiny, small organisms like bacteria and amoeba to plants, then fruits, to the big gigantic trees and animals like whales or dinosaurs. So we and plants are made up of? Yes, you're right. Every living being on this earth and out of this world is made up of cells. Now cell is also known as functional unit of life. So means that cell performs many functions. That's why I said before cell can eat, digest, grow, think, die etc. So these are the functions of a cell. When you grow that means your cells are growing. When you feel hungry, that doesn't mean your stomach needs food, but your whole body needs food, even your hair and nails. When a plant grows by taking water and produces fruit and flower is also a function. So every cell perform a different function. Cells are said to be a structural unit of life because they provide a particular structure to a particular organ and ultimately an organism. Like this, cells are called as functional unit of life because every different cell performs a different function for a particular organ. Example, we can't see by our nose or ears. Why? Because eye cells are having a function of vision that nose cells and ear cells do not have. That's why cell is known as a structural and functional unit of life. In this world, we have plants and animals and on the basis of these two, we have two types of cells. 
first one plant cells which are present in plants and second animal cells which are present in animals obviously right plant cells are generally larger in size than animal cells plants and animal cells have different shapes different sizes different functions in plants leaf cells are having different structure than the cells of stem and roots and when we talk about function also leaf cells can't become a fruit while flower can become a fruit because it is its function till here we have learned that why and how important a cell is now we are going to the second part now as we all know different parts of a body since when we were in montessori but what these body parts are made up of these body parts are also known as organs we have external organs and internal organs external organs are those organs which you can see on your body surface example eye nose hands legs etc while internal organs are those organ which are present inside your body and you can see those organ when you will cut a body of course when you will become a doctor an example of these internal organs are can you guess yes these organs are heart brain liver lungs etc like in animal plants also have their cells in the leaf stem and roots and each leaf stem and root is an organ of a plant in living things organs are made up of many tissues a tissue that doesn't mean your tissue paper okay a tissue is mainly made up of many same cells many same cells come together and make a tissue like a brain brain will have only brain cells known as neurons so we can say that many cells make a tissue many tissues make an organ many organs make an organ system like digestive system nervous system excretory system respiratory system etc so these are the organ systems which make an organism like human being or other animals if we take example to understand it it will be much easier we have many cells and many different tissues and many different tissues make many different organs like cells of tongue make tissues of tongue and tissues of tongue make whole tongue and cells of esophagus make tissues of esophagus and tissues of esophagus make whole esophagus same goes for the stomach and intestine also so every organ like tongue esophagus stomach intestine and anus is made up of many tissues and these organs make an organ system that is your digestive system in a body and many different systems in a body make a whole body so basically we are made up of cells which make tissue then organs then organ systems same applies for plants many cells of leaf make a tissue many tissues of leaf make a whole leaf and many leaves make a part of a plant this is how cells make whole living organism now did you understand how important cells are therefore we must learn more about it in the next video we are going to learn about what is there inside the cell and how each part of a cell functions i hope you all understood it and all have noted down the key terms and important points because without noting down the key terms and important points you can't learn this subject you can't learn this topic also cytology is a vast subject so if you have not noted down all the important points and key terms you must see this video again and note down all the points hey guys i hope you have learned something today if yes then click the like button below comment below share this video with amazing learners like you subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon so whenever i will upload any video you will be notified thank you